Hello everyone, my name is Lothorn, and welcome to the second part, and the cooler, funner, better part, of the Minecraft Bewitchment Diabolical Update, How To Jargle Garble Bargle. I've been turned into a demon by going into hell, but I've come back with an item of great power, the Codex Infernus. Oh my... What does it do? What does this horrible book do? Hmm? Huh? What does it do? What does it do? Well, it does nothing. Absolutely nothing. However, if you open it, you can read it and find some cool stuff out. So there is some new stuff added to the demonic book. I mean, it makes sense given that this is the demonic update. Come on. Sorry, not demonic, diabolical update. That means demonic. Anyways, so there is a whole bunch of new kinds of gear. Remember those evil robes I was talking about? Well, those are the besmirched robes, uh, upgraded from the mundane witch's robes, created by stitching the blue bloody cloth and stuff. Yeah. Anyways, it was when worn by, when worn, demons are less likely to attack you, quite useful. And it gives you a boost to the dark forms of magic, such as curses. <gasps> curses, oh my, what are those? Well, you'll find out, but be patient. There is more, so much more added. There's demon contracts, a book of boxes sealed yield, bottles of blood, oh my. We'll get back to that. Steal the grotesque, it's quite gross, requires a lot of things to make. Very useful stuff. Leonard's one, Basmus. Candy best Infernal tiles, not actually useful. Hellish bauble, actually quite useful. You should make one. Um, stew of the grotesque. Curses. Ooh. So let's start with curses. So curses also use the brazier. And there is the curse. So you can send the curse to the sender via tag lock. Now you can protect yourself from having it happen to you by... um making the tag lock of the person you suspect might be trying to curse you, and can misfire. There's also the curse of misfortune, which makes things suck for them. Um, yeah, there's curse of conflagration, curse of solar hatred, curse of overheating, lightning rods, one of my favorites, you become a lightning rod. Hydrophobia makes you sink, you can't swim very well, darkness is just mean, polar is just horrible, it just kills you slowly. However, we're going to cover the curse of solar hatred. So you take yourself along, and you're like, oh, I really hate that fella. Um, what's his face? Oh, I'm going to get him. And so you go, take that, and that, fiery unguent, snake venom, gold, salt, rotten flesh, and you light it on fire, and then the person gets lit on fire, slowed and everything when they're in sunlight. Basically turns them into a vampire or a zombie in sunlight. And then you have to clear a curse from yourself. And getting rid of the curse. Although you will always be able to do that. And so you have to look up how to clear curses on your own. Because I'm not going to help you do that. It's probably a ritual. Just, just accept that. Anyway, so that is curses covered. You just light things on fire. And curing them is difficult and sucks. The curse of cleansing. And the greater curse of cleansing. Which have a 50 and 90% chance of success rate. Unless some joker has made it so you fail rituals more likely, and then your life really sucks. I mean, what a prick if they go and do that. Which they can. So be careful and don't piss off a witch. General rule in life. Because they might sick a doom cat on you. Most deadly new mob in the game. Alright, now enough of that silliness. Back to the Codex Infernia. Demons and demonesses, which we have summoned before, which you are used to. Or are you? Well then, let us get ourselves one. Because there's something new and exciting about the demons and demonesses. So simply slap all the required bibbly boops into the ritual circle of three hells. Be sure to have your salt ring about it. They are still bound by the circle slightly. However, well, we'll get to that. It's quite cool. Next, prepare your sword of murderizing and drop a friendly little villager into the circle. You'll probably have to bait him in. Beware, zombies are jealous and will try to kill them. Now you just slap them back and forth because they're tough. And if you slap them while trying to kill them outside the ring, it doesn't work. But when you do it, you start summoning a demon. Which we've covered before and, well, it's never really done much besides summoning a demon. You're like, yeah, that's kind of boring. But bam, we got ourselves a demon. And uh, this lovely fellow here is running about. He's quite angry looking. Look at him. 
car analysis. Now then, this angry pick wants to kill us. So he'll run along and try to get us. Why would we summon a demon that wants to kill us? Well, if you click on the demon, oh my goodness, he will sell you stuff. Isn't that cool? And it is quite cool. However, it's quite expensive, and you won't be able to afford it right away, and you want to use your ritual circle for other things. So, you'll need to protect yourself with some salt. How do you go about doing this? If you want to get your ritual circle free, you simply punch the demon, and he goes, What you just do to me, mate? And he's like, I'm going to kill you. Go and murderize your face. And you're like, oh yeah, come on. Come on ahead and try that, punk. Go ahead. Bring it on. That's right. You're a wimp. And of course, you will want more salt in your inventory. But as you can see, that circle is quite useful on the outside because it stops the demon from absolutely mugging you. Then you very carefully, while he's glaring at you, close off his path of escape. And then you bust another hole in the whole shindig and you ward up again a little bit and then oh dear he's into the circle now you're in trouble and bam you got yourself a demon imprisoned yay and now you can just leave this free and open and nice he can't cross the salty line you're perfectly safe you should reestablish it if you want to summon more demons in the future but now you got yourself a your very own demon imprisoned in a circle. And he'll stick around because he's the name's mob. And then you can walk forward and trade with him and his little head will start freaking out. But once you're in the mood of trading with him, he can give you all sorts of interesting stuff if you're willing to be patient and have a lot of gold on your hands. Like any good trader or villager, once you've traded him enough, he gets a little swirls around himself and he'll start trading you more interesting things, such as efficiency, and, ooh, Trigon's blood, man, what a generous fellow. And start offering you better deals. However, it appears we have maxed this fellow out in all the interesting deals he has to offer, which is quite unfortunate. However, some of the things they can offer you include enchanted items and weapons, demonic contracts, and if you're lucky, a box of sealed evil, which is basically Pandora's box. The, let's cover demonic deals from here because we can't get him to trade what we wanted. So the box of evil is an absolutely horrible item you should never have, um, ever. Quite serious about this. It absolutely sucks. It's a very dangerous thing. I, I wouldn't recommend using it. But if you want to roll the dice, you can open this sucker up and summon yourself some ghost serpents. Make yourself poisoned and weak. Oh, bats and crows everywhere. Might be useful. Oh, look at that, you got some medium inventory, not so bad. Oh, more bats. Oh, some direwolves, lovely. More bats. Oh, what's this? Feather falling. Some iron traveling stuff, okay, not so bad. What else you got in here? Oh my goodness, a book of, book of fortune. Some flowers, not bad, some plants. So it can offer you some good things. It can also summon shadow men, turn to night, fill your inventory full of meat, give you gems. And every once in a while, it'll drop a demonic pact into your hands. Now, a demonic pact is quite interesting. It requires you to obtain things, so you have to follow the instructions of the pact, and you sign it. So, the pact is now signed. So, pact bound to Lord Thorn. And once you do these things, obtain um, blaze rods and magma creams, the fun starts to go. These packs are useful. And we will explain why. Because there's a whole bunch of different packs. There's Devouring Rage, which makes you heal whenever you kill things. There is Berserking, which makes you deal more damage but lowers your health. There's Ignition, which lets you small, um, smell ore. There is Tolerance of Fire. And there is, um, if you have a Tag Lock in your offhand, well, activate the Tag Lock freezes solid and splinters into cell pieces, killing whoever it was, which is quite brutal. So you can get all sorts of powers from these demonic packs. Who once you complete them. There is several items as well, which is like the Hellish Trinket, and things you can only get through trading through demons or opening up that box. But finally, the most interesting thing of all from the demons is summoning the big guys, which we are about to cover. So to summon the big guys, simply take out the old Infernum Condexium, 
look into it and go, all right, well, that was cool, the lesser demon. Trading was a little difficult with him, but I want to summon some greater demonic nobles. Eh, random lore stuff. Ah, Bafflemont. All right, oh yes, the titty goat. How do we summon ourselves a titty goat? Well, before you even think of summoning him, be sure to wear a full set of witch's robes and have a pentagram at the ready. Once you're certain about yourself, you go, okay, how, how, how do I summon this thing? So I need pentagram and horns and all that stuff. Sounds pretty janky, but I'm up for it. So you're going to just take yourself, oh my goodness, a demonic heart. How do you get a demon heart? You have to kill a demon, duh. Don't be such a numpty. Flying ointment, bottle of hellfire, a horn, liquid critchcraft, another pentacle. And you walk up to here and you go, all right, buddy, let's get this show on the road. You get yourself a goat, or a sheep, and you kill him, and bam, the ritual starts, and then you run away from the ritual circle. And you get the pentagram in your offhand. Quickly, quickly, you take out your stew of the grotesque, because you're about to summon an incredibly dangerous and powerful demon, one of the greater demons. And you, he shows up, he wants to kill you. You drink the stew of the grotesque, oh my goodness, his horrible stuff. It messes you up. But now, um, he likes you, and if he likes you, you can hang out with him, and with your experience, you can receive packs from him, and he'll give you demon packs for free, which is great. Man, what an awesome guy. And he is the first of the demons you can summon. So, now that we have him dealt with, we don't really care about him. So you summon himself a demon, though, and he gives you packs and all that lovely stuff. And levels, basically, he can make you stronger in sorcery. Now, if you want to kill one of these suckers for their items, they're very hard to kill. Unless you have cold iron and a circle of salt, because they can't cross it. Now, cold iron is quite effective, but even that will take a while, as you can see. But it's easier to set the game mode to easy and get rid of him. But if you want to kill them, then you need to do some shit. All right, now that he's out of the way and dealt with, let's get on to the next fun bit. So that's the first greater demon you can now summon. The other greater demon is uh, this lame guy over here, Leonard. No one likes Leonard. He's he's such a lame goathead. Such a lame goathead. Ah, uh, Leonard. So you get the basics for summoning a greater demon yet again, which are of course over here. But Leonard requires a little different luck. He requires some gross stew and some blood. So you go, hey, Leonard, eh, I want to summon you, buddy. And you slap all these things here. Now, Leonard likes alchemy and and such stuff. And you check out the book for summoning him. So Basilmoth, we're done with Basilmoth. Mouthball sucks, but Leonard, what, what, a, what a, what a lame sucker. Anyways, Leonard uh, requires you to wear yourself some Stew of the Grotesque while holding a green candle and a full set of green witch's robes. So he wants you to hold a green candle. Uh, of course, he does. So Stew of the Grotesque, green candle in your offhand, and some green witch's robes because he, he likes his ladies in green and men. And of course, like everyone else, he requires some sheepy sheeps to summon. So again, we're going to go to the basic game mode and we're going to slap down a sheepy sheep and slap it and run away take out the stew and we're going to summon ourselves our lovely friend Basilmont there we go and he's going to start shooting fireballs off if we don't drink this thing hey Basilmont no we drink it we drink it we service you we pledge our lines ah okay didn't work aren't I wearing full green robes all right well that did not work anyways you pledge yourself to Basilmont and follow the instructions correctly and he's actually quite dangerous has an incredibly powerful staff is very very hard to kill he'll light everything on fire he's a right prick um but he will teach you better alchemy stuff and all those sorts of good things you can try to kill him as well if you like we're not going to do that we're going to cover a little bit more stuff about uh, demonics and the like so both of them are quite fun fellows. If you do manage to kill them, which is very hard, they are quite powerful, you can get some items off them. This is from Basilmont, and it says Candice. A special staff with snakes. 
Once re um, received, the ghost can summon. Yeah, so this staff can be used to summon spectral fell worms to act as minions to the owner. Also, if you're killed with holding it, it will bring you back to life. Um, it can't be intended. So it's a cool item. And the other thing is Leonard's wand, that guy over there. Which is, uh, his wand is really cool as well. You can cast brews as if they were spells, and it can hold up to eight charges, so you can just basically pow, zap, and cast spells with it. It's pretty cool stuff. That is all. The new stuff to Bewitchment Diabolical Update. There is new demons, new boss demons, all sorts of new fun stuff. There is Shadow Man. You can even sometimes get Hat Man coming out there. He's quite spooky. There is... No matter how much it seems like it, no vampires or werewolves. Trust me on this. Vampires and werewolves are still not out yet. They'll be out in the very next big update. But for now, this is the demons. You can curse your friends. You can curse yourself. You can bless yourself. You can summon all sorts of demons. You can trade with them, get all sorts of cool fun packs. You can do all sorts of fun things. So yes, that is it. That is the diabolical update. You cannot make yourself look like my character. That's a different mod entirely. But, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you find that moderately useful. That is me done for today. Dear God, I am exhausted. So thank you all for watching. And I'll catch you all when the next mod comes out. Goodbye.